Today, lesson 30A, writing the equation of a line. So today we're going to work on writing the equation of a line. We'll also quickly talk about why we need uh, this method that we're about to learn today. And we're going to be explaining in words what the point-slope equation, or sometimes it's called point-slope form, um, is all about. So earlier this trimester, I asked you these same exact problems. I gave you these graphs. And we had to come up with the equation for these graphs. Then when we went into what we termed as function rules, I gave you the same graphs again. Remember, a function rule is really the same thing as asking for an equation of a line. And these two were both very easy because we can easily find the slope and we can easily find the y-intercept because the y-intercept is very clear on this one. It's right here and very clear that it is right there. Even though there's no dot there to represent the ordered pair, it does go perfectly through uh, the y-intercept on both of them. So the graph on the left, the y-intercept is negative 2, and the slope is rise 4, run 2, or rise 2, run 1, however you want to look at that. And uh, the equation of that graph is y equals 2x minus 2, or the function rule is y equals 2x minus 2. The one on the right, y-intercept is negative 3, the slope is negative one-third. Putting that together, the equation of that line is y equals negative one-third x minus three, or the function rule of that graph is y equals negative one-third x minus three. But what's different about this graph compared to the other two, or any other graph that I've given you so far where I've asked you to write the equation or the function rule? The, the y-intercept is not an integer, right? It's not an integer. So how in the world are we going to go about trying to figure out what the equation of that line is? Well, that's where we need another method. And that method is the point-slope equation. Once again, sometimes it's called the point-slope form. But uh, this little formula is something that you are going to have to memorize because it is a quick, easy way, and we're going to use it a lot over the next couple of weeks, it's a quick, easy way of figuring out what the equation of a line or a function rule is. And um, it's called the point-slope equation because of the fact that you need a point and you need the slope. And where do those pieces come from? Well, those two parts right there, the x sub 1 and the y sub 1, that's where we put our ordered pair. The regular x and regular y just stay as regular x and regular y. The m, of course, is the slope. So we will be inputting an ordered pair into these two areas right here, the x sub 1 and the y sub 1, and our slope will always go right there. And then from there, we'll put those pieces in and simplify to turn our equation in slope-intercept form. All right, here's number one. Write the equation in slope-intercept form that passes through negative 2, comma 6 with a slope of positive 3. We have a point. We have a slope. That means we can use the point-slope equation. So let's start with our point-slope equation. And remember, the areas that we are filling in here are right here. The ordered pair that we are given, or the point, will go here. Slope will go right there. So I usually start all of these like this. Um, let me get that caught up. I usually start them like this. Y minus, leave a blank, and then a blank, and then X minus, and leave a blank. Because it is those three areas that you are filling in. Our ordered pair is negative 2, comma 6. The X sub 1 is negative 2. The Y sub 1 is 6 and our slope is right there. From there, you take what you have and simplify and make sure that your equation is in slope-intercept form. So we would have to, of course, use the distributive property. So let me get caught up here. Use the distributive property. I went ahead and added the opposite inside the parentheses first. Then use the distributive property. Then add 6 to both sides. And now we have our equation in slope-intercept form. So the equation of the line that goes through negative 2, comma 6 
and has a slope of 3 is y equals 3x plus 12. So you take your points, input it into the right parts of your point-slope equation, take your slope, input it in for m, simplify, get your equation in slope-intercept form. All right, any questions with number one? All right. So let's quickly review um, the forms of a linear equation. Yesterday we talked about standard form. We've been talking a lot about slope-intercept form, and now we have this new thing that sometimes is called point-slope equation, sometimes it's called point-slope form. They are the same thing, okay? We, make, we need to make sure we have all three of these things very clear. All right, everybody try number two. All right, let's take a look at this. Our ordered pair is 5 comma negative 1. There's our point. We have our slope of 3 fifths. There's our m. We input that into the point-slope equation. So we end up with y minus negative 1. A couple of you wrote my, y minus 1. It's y subtract negative 1 equals 3 fifths times the quantity x minus 5. Uh, go ahead and add the opposite on the left-hand side. Use the distributive property to get rid of the parentheses. And if we were to stop uh, right here, this is why I keep writing point-slope form. This, if we were to stop right here, that's point-slope form. That's not slope-intercept form. Uh, so let's use the distributive property and then subtract 1 from both sides, and we end up with y equals 3 fifths x minus 4. That's the equation of that line. That's also the function rule for that situation. Okay. Now, let's go back to this very first question that I asked you about where we realized that we had problems. How would we go about trying to do this one? And then just do the same as the other ones, right? So we need a slope and we need a point. Well, notice that there's two points here. Reality is it doesn't matter which of those two points that you use. Um, so let's find the slope. And I'm going to use negative 2 comma 3. Uh, why? Because I can. You could also use 1 comma uh, 1. It does not matter. You would still end up with the same equation. And our slope is negative 2 thirds. Notice that I used a triangle to find that. But uh, now let's take those two pieces of information and find the equation for that line. Now, whether it's obvious to you as you're working this one out, you can see from the graph that the y-intercept is not an integer. You can also see that it's somewhere between 1 and 2. So when you get your y-intercept after you put this equation in slope-intercept form, you better get something that's in between 1 and 2. If not, Obviously, something is not right. Take a look at this. The point is negative 2 comma 3. The slope is negative 2 thirds. This is the first one where we have to pay a little more attention to what we're doing because of the fact that uh, our y-intercept is not an integer. So I've plugged in my slope and my ordered pair. I've added the opposite uh, within the parentheses there. Now I'm going to use the distributive property and most of you did the right thing, but a couple of you right here is where things went wrong. Um, we need to add 3 to both sides right here. So we're going to have to figure out, I know it's going to be y equals negative 2 thirds x plus something or minus something, but uh, this is the part where we have to figure out, I didn't mean to circle the x in there. We've got to figure out what negative 4 thirds plus 3 is. And... Um, you know, finding the common denominator or using that little trick that I showed you earlier in the year. But either way, what's the rest of this thing? Yeah, negative 4 thirds plus 3 is plus 5 thirds. I shouldn't have to show the work on that, but I will really quickly. Uh, I'll just do it like right down here. Negative 4 thirds plus 3 over 1. Common denominator is 3, so we have negative 4 thirds plus 9 thirds. And that is the five thirds that we get right there. Yes. Is it okay if you uh, multiply everything by three? Well, th and that's fine. But then you're going to end up having to divide by three. So you've kind of done one more step than you need to do. But if that makes it better for you, you can only do that 
if you have an equation. Is this an equation? Yeah, it's an equation. We have equal symbols in here and variables, so it is an equation, okay? All right, so this one, the equation of this should be y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 5 thirds. And 5 thirds is 1 and 2 thirds. And if you look right here, this is about 1 and 2 thirds. So we know that we probably did the right thing there. All right, let's go to number 4. We have two ordered pairs this time, kind of like in the last problem, 4, 3, and 6, 8. But what's missing here if we want to use the point-slope equation? What's missing? You, you're going, you need a slope and you need a point. We have two points. We can use either one of those, but we need a slope. How are we going to find the slope? Yeah, so you want to use the slope formula. So let's do that really quickly. We need to find the slope, which is 8 minus 3 over 6 minus 4. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And that means our slope is 5 halves. Now, it does not matter which ordered pair that you use. However, my standard rule is this. I'm going to pick the ordered pair that looks like it will be the easiest to deal with. So if I have a choice of one order pair that has both positive numbers and the other one doesn't, I'll pick the one with both positive numbers. If I have two order pairs with the same number of positive numbers, I'll pick the one with smaller numbers because we are less likely to make a mistake with smaller numbers. But it does not matter which order pair that you use. I will let you take it from there. All right, just out of curiosity, how many of you use 6, 8 as your order pair? Yeah, it may not have, it may have been much more than that if I had not gave you my little tip of using the smaller numbers. But, uh, so most of you used 4, 3. I'm going to use 4, 3. So we substitute that in for the point. We have our slope of 5 halves. It looks like this. Use the distributive property to get rid of the parentheses. Then add 3 to both sides. And we end up with an equation of y equals 5 halves x minus 7 or that would be the function rule for that situation. All right? Everyone try number five. We definitely are going to need to find the slope, so let's do that first. Uh, slope ends up being negative 7 fifths. It doesn't matter which order pair that you use. I am going to use 3 comma negative 1. And the reason why I picked that one, each of them had one positive number and one negative number, but that had the smaller numbers of the two ordered pairs. So that's the reason why I chose that one. But it doesn't matter which one that you use. Mm -hmm. So we substitute the ordered pair in. Then I added the opposite on the left-hand side and went ahead and used the distributive property on the other side. From there, I need to subtract 1 from both sides. So um, when I did that, I went ahead and converted the this part to negative 5 fifths because I needed to find the common denominator. And so that would leave me with y equals negative 7 fifths x plus 16 fifths. Okay, any questions with this one? All right, let's go ahead and try number 6, and then we'll go on to the last thing for today. All right, so we have two ordered pairs. It doesn't matter which one you use. Regardless, though, we still need to find the slope first. Slope for this one should be negative 2 elevenths. I am going to use... 4 comma negative 3. And I use that one over the other one because only one number is negative and we're less likely to make mistakes using positive numbers over negative numbers and smaller numbers over bigger numbers. But it doesn't matter. You could use negative 7 comma negative 1. Uh, so I, I substitute those numbers in, add the opposite on the left-hand side, use the distributive property on the right-hand side. From there, I need to, of course, subtract three from both sides, and my equation will be y equals negative two elevenths x, and then I have to figure out this part right here, the eight, positive eight elevenths minus three, so I'll need to find a common denominator and do all that stuff, um, but when I subtract three from both sides, that will give me negative 33 elevenths, and eight minus 33 is negative 25, so it is y equals negative two elevenths x minus 25 elevenths. Any questions with number six? 
All right, so the last couple of days we have ended with actually the easiest stuff, but it's, if, if I don't have a discussion about it, it ends up being the most missed stuff. So let's take a look at number seven. In fact, I'd like all of you quickly to find the equation of that line. And as I'm walking around, watching work, already I see what I was just talking about. What's the slope for this one? Zero. Yeah, and some of you are like, uh-oh, I don't know what to do. The slope is zero. Well, what difference does it make, right? The slope is zero. So I use zero for my slope. Doesn't matter which order pair they use. I'm still going with my same strategy. I'm going to use two common negative three because at least one of the numbers is positive there. And then when you simplify, you end up with y equals negative 3. But here's the deal. If you end up with a slope that is either 0 or undefined, you need to take a time out for a second because there's something different going on in those two types of problems. Because think about this, and this is the reason why I ended yesterday's lesson with the review of y equals numbers or constants for graphs and x equals numbers because they have something in common. If you end up with y equals negative 3, that means y is always negative 3. And if you look at the two ordered pairs, they both have a y equals negative 3 in common. So if you end up with a slope of 0 or a slope that is undefined, you need to stop and look at your ordered pairs because there will be something different about the ordered pairs. There's the graph of y equals negative 3. Look at the two ordered pairs. They both have y equals negative 3 in common, and y will always be negative 3. Okay? Same thing, and this is basically what I'm saying. If the slope is 0 or undefined, look at your ordered pairs. All right. Let's see if you can figure out this one without doing anything. If you find the slope here, the slope is undefined, by the way. Okay? So at that point, you should stop yourself and think about what's happening. Look at the order pairs. Anybody know what the equation is? So seven or eight of you know? All right, a few more. Look at the ordered pairs. Morgan. X equals five. Look at the two ordered pairs. Five comma negative two, five comma seven. If you think about that, if you were to plot both of those ordered pairs, this is what the graph looks like. Right there. That equation will be x equals 5. All right. So a quick little review here. Look at number 9. Raise your hand if you know what the equation is. George. Mason. There you go. How about this one? Ivan. There you go. How about this one? Y equals 5. I gave you a slope of 0, so you should have known that it had to be a horizontal line. How about 12? Leah? There you go. All right. We are finished for today.